Welcome. This video is the first one in a series of tutorials about writing a game in Unity. The game will be developed step by step, and all the development will be explained in details. The tutorial is for beginners. What you need to do this tutorial. A recent version of Unity installed. I am using 2020.3. A version of Visual Studio. Visual Studio community that comes with Unity is just fine. What game are we going to build? We will build a recreation of an old Flash game called, Burrito Bison. The game was created by Juicy Beast and is available on Congregate. Let's have a quick look to the game. What the game will be. We will have a 2D view of the area. On the very left there will be a cannon to shoot the player to the right. The player will be affected by simple physics, like gravity, friction, bouncing, etc., and it will lose power at every bounce. Once the player stops, the game ends. We will add coins to collect to be used to get enhancements, like a better cannon or be more elastic. And we will add some simple controls for the player. The name for the game will be, Launchables. We will have a, cannon, at the very left. When starting, the player will be launched. The player will have a vertical velocity and an horizontal velocity. The gravity will be applied to make it go down. When reaching the ground, we will apply a bounce effect, and we will reduce the velocity, until the player stops. Start by creating a new project in Unity. Start Unity Hub and click on New. Select the version of Unity if you have more than one. I am using version 2020.3. Define the path for the project and the name for the project. Be sure you set the project to 2D. After a short while, the project will be created, and the main window of Unity will open. This is the default window of Unity. Let's check what are the different areas of Unity. Be aware every tab can be repositioned in a different part of the screen. 1. Scene View. Here you will see what you are building. With all the tools to build and change the items. 2. The Scene Hierarchy. This tree contains all the objects of your game, or at least a part of your game. It is used to organize the items. Keep in mind that also on a simple game, you will have hundred if not thousands of objects. 3. The project folder, that is called, assets. Here you will have all the files, images, scripts, musics, sound, of your game. 4. The console. Here you will see any error and warning that your game has. 5. The inspector. This will show all the properties of the selected object. 6. Finally, the game view. This tab is a preview of what you will see when running the game. The empty project will start with only two items, the scene and the camera. The scene is a container of all the items that will build your game, including the information about the status, the position, etc. The camera is used to define what the game will show. Select the scene and rename it. Call it Launchables. And confirm to reload the scene. Select the camera and check the inspector. You will see orthographic. This means that the camera is adapted for a 2D game. Now, go in the assets and create a new folder. Call it, graphics. We will use this folder to store the images and the sprites. I already created a couple of PNG images for the player. A simple circle right now. And the cannon, that is a simple cylinder. Drag and drop the images inside the assets folder and they will be usable by Unity. Select the player sprite and drag and drop it in the scene. Do the same with the cannon. Now, select the player in the scene, you can select it in the hierarchy or int the scene view, and check the inspector. The top part of the inspector is called, transform. This defines the position, rotation, and scale of an object. All objects in an unity scene, will have a transform. Set all values to zero by resetting the transform. Alter the interface of unity by dragging the game tab, and placing it on the side. You can change the position of all the tabs of unity. By having the game view on the side, you can see both scene view and game view. Select the image of the cannon. In the inspector you can change the pixels per unit. This defines how big the sprite will be. Use a value that is appropriate to your image. Then press the button, sprite editor, this will open a new tab. Here we will change the pivot of the sprite. A pivot is the center of the object. All positions and rotations will be relative to this point. Place the pivot to the bottom of the cylinder. Save and close the Sprite Editor tab. Now, select the cannon, 
position the cannon on the bottom left. Select the Rotate tool, and rotate it 45 degrees. Select the player image, change the pixels per unit to have a similar size, and place it in the start position, just in front of the cannon. Now the scripts. Our first script will be the main script of the game. It will handle the full game logic. To do this, create a folder and call it scripts. Then create a script and call it game logic. Now, create an empty game object in the scene. Call it game. Then select it, and drag and drop the script we created inside the inspector. This will associate the script to the game object. Double click the script to start Visual Studio. Once the script is loaded, remove the boilerplate code. You can see the name of the script that is also the name of the class. A class is a definition for a piece of code in C-sharp. What we will need here. A reference to the player to control it. The reference to some extra info we will use in the game, like the max distance traveled, the power-ups, etc. Something that will initialize all the variables when the game starts. Something to handle the inputs. Let's start with a reference to the player. In the script, inside the class, add a property. Public game object player. Public is to have it visible and accessible. There are better ways, but right now we will do it in the simplest possible way. Game object, capital G and capital O, is the definition of the type we will use. All objects inside a scene in Unity have this type. Player is the name of the variable that will hold the player. Save the script and go back to Unity. If you select the game object, you will see that the inspector has now a field for the player. Drag and drop the player game object inside. This will create an actual link between the script and the player object. Now, let's set a reference to the camera. We will need it to make the camera move. Go back to the script and add public camera cam. Save and go back to Unity. Now you have a second field called cam. Fill it with the camera. Now, let's define all we need when we start. The camera should be at the origin position. Let's use 0, 0, minus 10 as origin position for the camera. The cannon should be in the origin. The current position is the right one. Select the game object and copy the position from the transform in the inspector. The player should be not visible, and placed on the top of the cannon. Some other variables may be initialized, for example the distance we reached. We will then create a method in the script to initialize all these values. A method is some code that has a name, and can be called by another part of the code. Let's call this method, init. Inside we get the camera by the reference. We get its transform. Remember, the transform defines position and rotation. Then we get the position part and we set it to 0, 0, minus 10. This will move the camera to the specified position when this line will be executed. Let's get the player object and disabled it. This will make the player to be not visible, and no code inside the player will be executed. Let's create a variable called distance and set it to zero. So far so good, but the method will do nothing until it is called. When we want to call it, for sure when the game is loaded, but also if we want to do another play. To have it called when the game starts, we can use one method defined by Unity that is called, start. This method is called directly by Unity once for every object when the object life will start. Let's add a call to out init method inside. Save the script, and go back to Unity. Let's move the camera in a different place, just to test, and let's run for the first time the game. The only thing we will see now, is that the camera will be moved to the position we specified. And the player will be no more visible. Now, stop the game. You will see that the camera will go back to the position we used before, and the player will be visible again. Whatever happens when playing is not saved. And now some input handling. 
keyboard, controllers, mouse, touches, etc., are handled by the input class. There are one classic one and a new one. For this tutorial we will use the classic one. And the inputs have to be handled inside the update cycle. The update cycle is some code that is executed every frame. Here you have the ability to check the inputs and apply the resulting logic. Use input.get key down to check for keys pressed. We use an if to check if the key is pressed. And if it is, we will call a new method. Let's call this method, start game. Inside this method, right now, we will just show something in the console. This is to have a feedback on what are we doing. You can print some text in the console with the command debug.log. This will work when debugging your code and will show some message. Let's select the console tab. Run the game, and click the space key. A message will appear in the console. What we did in this video. We created a basic Unity project. We added a couple of sprites. We created a basic script. Let's have a look to the sections of the script. We have the class, that is the script we created. We defined some references to other objects, the player and the camera. When the game will start, the start method is called by Unity. The start method will just call the init method. The init method will initialize some values, the camera position and the player. Then Unity will execute the update each frame. Inside the update we check if the space key is pressed. If it is, we will call another method called start game. Start game will just print a message in the console. That's it for this first tutorial. In the next one, we will start adding some code to the player. We will implement some simple physics and we will discuss about vectors. Check our Discord site for help in game development. Ciao. See you later.